All right, it is the finals of League Monthly. I love how I kind of transition that. It is the finals of League Monthly brought to you by Esports <laughs> Monthly. Uh, Team Rage versus Team Just the Usual. Regards casting this game right alongside my good friend Fourth Oracle here from Dirt Nap Gaming. Big thank you out to Fourth Oracle who's been helping me out all tournament long and providing some just great commentary. I'm really looking forward to this one. Rage and Just the Usual have provided a lot of great games. Um, I, I really would recommend, if you haven't seen them, if you're just ca tuning into the finals, head on over to my YouTube, youtube.com backslash one regards or on esportsmonthly.com. They have the videos on there and check out some of the video on demand. It has been a great tournament so far. But this is game number one. It's a best out of three. Let's see how it goes. I, I, I love the style. I love a lot of the characters that we're seeing picked here because um, we don't see Kogma totally as much as we used to. Kogma uh -huh. is a strong competitive. I, I, I really like to think of Kogma as the competitive AD carry versus the solo queue AD carry. Kogma needs, he doesn't have really much of an escape. So uh, I, I love that pick. Kogma, Katarina, who we don't see too often. Uh, we, we do have the Renekton top. Renekton we don't necessarily see a ton of times. So this should be great. I, I love it. <laughs> and uh, Slacko saying gaming house? I, I'm assuming. <laughs> oh, nope. Chris says nope. No so it looks else. like Renekton is just going to be going top, not going to be doing too much jungle aggression. However, Rage showing that really strong early game. I do believe that they have the stronger early game composition. Decanter has, of course, picked up Burnout, going to be doing a lot of AoE damage, not going to be able to be escaped if they want to chase someone down. Slacko has not picked up any abilities yet. In the meantime, we have Cassiopeia, of course, picking up Noxious Blast, going to be able to do uh, quite a bit of damage. And Corky hasn't picked up an ability yet. Well, one thing I, that a lot of pros say that is kind of a good idea is to not pick your moves up until you really absolutely have to, just so you kind of know in cases of team fight what moves to go with. And I, I like that. I like it when teams do that. Yeah, it's a very strong decision. Because the thing that's better for laning may not be su such a good decision if you have a level 1 team fight. And it looks like Rage is confident enough. Oh, look, it actually looks like they're just going to be defending red. That's interesting. I think they have the much stronger level 1 fight. Janna has Tornado. Oh, looks like she leveled up Eye of the Storm first instead. But Janna is such a very strong level 1 fighter because she can throw her Tornado out, hurt almost the entire team, knock them up with some really strong CC. And uh, I just don't understand why they didn't go for the invasion. Well, they could I'm easily won it. I'm not necessarily totally surprised just because Shyvana, she has really, really strong level 2 ganks almost along the lines of Lee Sin. Lee Sin, of course, has his extremely long... I I'm surprised Lee Sin is going for a blue take right away. It looks like he's going with kind of a, a uh, usual start. He's starting off with cloth and five pots, whereas Shyvana is starting with a really aggressive boots and three pots. But that's going to give Shyvana a quick level 2, also a red buff. And don't be surprised if we see Shyvana run to bot lane really quickly here and maybe try to pick up a quick kill. I, I, I'm I wouldn't be totally surprised. Instead of looks like he's going to make his way up into the uh, western forest, the western jungle up here, and kind of farm a little bit more, but I'm, I'm not too surprised by that. Uh, I, I guess I know what you're saying, but I think that it's a, a strong move from Shyvana. She's able to farm jungle really fast, and uh, you know, Nicanter has been kind of telling us this whole time he's got this pro Shyvana that he wants to show off to everyone. <laughs> so so yeah, we'll see. Yeah, he's been bragging about that yeah, this we'll whole see. game. Or this whole tournament, I'm sorry. And we see some harass coming out onto Flares and Helios on Kogma and Janna. Oh, actually, I'm going to have to interrupt myself because it looks like Shivana wants to go for a gank. Nope, she's been spotted. And even though she's been spotted, it looks like she wants to come around and try to get the red that Ooh. Chris has just taken. They're playing Ring Around the Rosie <laughs> here at Red Buff. <laughs> This is going to be interesting. Lee Sin is catching Shyvana, and Lee Sin with both buffs. Shyvana only has one buff. There goes the slow on to Shyvana. He also has the Q off on her. Oh, he Qs oh, back oh, in, oh. taking big time damage. Chris with the first blood. However, he is in a uh, dangerous situation right now. Actually, Shen in a very dangerous situation. More damage going on to Decade. He's playing Shen. Shen gets stunned by Renekton, and that is going to be two kills right away for Team Just the Usual, picking up two very big kills, and they're going to also pick up this blue buff for Cassiopeia, and that is going to be huge. Yeah, I, I really think that I predicted that Katarina was going to be winning that mid lane, but now that Cassiopeia has blue buff and they have the timer on it, keep that in mind. So they won't. So Rage is not going to be able to time that out as they would like to. Cassiopeia could. Oh, looks like she didn't get blue buff. It looks like Chris picked it up instead. Wow. Oh no. I'm not that sure if that was like an accident or not, but that would have been much better on Cassiopeia. Um, I'm a little bit surprised by that as well because I think Kat now Katarina has also the experience and gold advantage over Cassiopeia. We'll see her leveling a little bit faster. 
Yeah, definitely. I think that that was real. I think that's really going to hamstring Cassiopeia because she really needed that blue buff to make up for the fact that Katarina had pushed up mid lane so hard. Yeah, I, I am really surprised by that. Taking a look at it, we've got Katarina with 1,033 gold. We've got Cassiopeia, who actually has more, uh, right around the same amount of gold. Both are staying pretty close in CS, 18 for Katarina. So I guess it didn't affect her that much, but look at Cassiopeia just hitting level 4 now, so you know that it at least affected her a little bit. Now we do see Lee Sin coming in over from the river uh, into the jungle, and Ket, and Ket has no idea. She did just use her, uh, her port over there, so... Uh, I'm gonna have to. That's that Shun Po. She did use her Shun Po, so that's on cooldown right now. It's back up, and Lee Sin's going to come in there. I am afraid that's not going to do too much. Oh, some damage going down. Lee Sin getting in there, and she'll just Shun Po out and be fine. Yeah, that Shun Po is on a decently short cooldown 9.6 seconds, usually ready in case of a gank. She just has to stay back until it's three seconds out, and then she can just Shun Po to one of her minions. Uh, now, it looks like Shivana's going for some aggression in the jungle here. Wants, or uh, not, not Shivana, sorry, Lee Sin. It looks like. I don't know if I don't know if he got anything. I was too busy watching mid lane there. <laughs> no, it looks like nothing really kind of came out of that. Lee Sin was making his way throughout the jungle. We see a little bit of harassment going back and forth mid lane, but Lee Sin was coming into the jungle. I'm not sure if Shyvana actually knew that he was there or not, but she wasn't going to have anything to do with it. Lee Sin has both buffs right now. Shyvana is just trying to make up. Just hit level four. Uh, Lee Sin is actually about halfway up to level five. So uh, it's kind of a smart move by Shyvana. Just kind of keep farming your jungle. Keep going around. Be a little bit safe about it. Oh, and we see a big stun go off on the. Sh Shen, uh, he is going to have to use his feint, and actually Renekton kind of getting the best out of Shen up there, and it looks like it's just going to be a little bit of a trade, and nothing's going to come of it. Yeah, that's really interesting to see. Renekton not having nearly as much sustain as Shen. Shen with his Vorpal Blade, of course, the heal got buffed in the most recent patch, and he has some really strong bursts, but Renekton does have a little bit of sustain of his own that uh, Cole the Meek doing a, doing a lot of healing for himself. Absolutely. Oh, it looks like he's yeah. He, it looks like he's able to win trades because he is. He does have ruthless predator, which is his strongest trading ability. Yeah, he also is getting Call the Meek, and with Call the Meek, like you said, he is going to be healing for a decent amount. Maybe not as much as Shen, but oh, we do see some f big fight going down in mid, and nothing's really going to come out of that. Lee Sin, though, is camping up top, and I do not believe Decade knows that he's there. You do see the purple ward. That means that uh, right now, Ran uh, Just Usual has it. Oh, and the sun goes off onto him. The slow from Lee Sin. He's going to use his dash out of there, and it looks like he will be fine. Uh, let's keep an eye on mid for a little while because it looks like Cassiopeia is just about out of mana and it looks like, yeah, no, nope. for a second I thought <laughs> Slacko was going to come around, maybe even flash over the wall to, to try and get that early kill. Oh, we might see a possible dive here up at top tower, Renekton taking some turret damage as he uses his Call of the Meek in there. Uh, we do see Shyvana kind of camping down at the bottom, so uh, nothing's going to come out of that, although we do see the pings going down from Pawn Gypsy. They do know that Katarina's there and so instead he is going to back out of there and not push the lane. <laughs> A little bit surprised we have not seen so far. We've seen a little bit of fights going on up here. We've seen a little bit of of uh, aggression in the jungle, however. We haven't really seen too much. Oh, and we do see some some harassment going down. Raging Kenny taking a lot out of Kogma, but we haven't seen it that aggressive. This really hasn't been as aggressive as a game as I thought it would be. Yeah, definitely. I'm surprised that Rage is taking more of a back seat in this game and just taking the time to farm. And I, I can understand that to a certain extent because... Just the usual, sorry, blanking on the name there for a moment. Just the usual did have those two early kills, and it would be dangerous to try and invade because Lee Sin, of course, got that first blood. Then Renekton got a kill for himself, so that makes sense why he'd be doing uh, pretty well. Yeah, he picked up a second Doran's Blade for laning. In the meantime, Raging Kenny got getting pushed out of lane because Nunu had backed to go pick up a couple of wards, a couple of health pots. And we do see a little bit of a staring contest going on by Dragon. I have to assume eight minutes into the game, we do see Shyvana. Does she have her razor? Uh, yes, no, no. Shyvana no, does not, not have her razor yet. Lee Sin does, does have his razor. So uh, I'm a little bit surprised they're not trying to push Dragon a little bit. However, Raging Kenny Corky having to back out of there. That's actually the second time he's backed in the last two minutes. So uh, I, I guess I'm not totally surprised, but I would have assumed by now we would have seen a bit of a Dragon fight. We haven't yet. We do see Ping starting to go down. Both of them have have it warded so i'm expecting a team fight to happen here within the next couple of minutes yeah definitely chris and or i, I should say lee sin and shivana both have just picked up red so let's see how much time is left on it it's only about yeah there, there's still plenty of time left on it but i wouldn't be surprised if both of them decided they wanted to try for dragon while they still had red buff now the cancer right now doesn't have his ult yet 
Also, Rage does not have a dragon up at ward anymore. Ram, uh, just the usual, does. Something <laughs> to kind of take note of, and they just hit level 6. I was going to say, Corky and Nunu have not hit 6 yet either, while Janna and Kogma were at level 6. However, we see everybody just kind of standing around except for mid-tower. I was kind of saying, what happened? Did somebody DC? I hope not. <laughs> no, I think we're all right. But yeah, like, like you said, there is a warded dragon. Right now, just the usual has wards all down the river. Look at that. Yep. Every possible entrance is warded. While Rage Gaming, they only have one ward near mid lane. Look at that. Just the usual definitely has more ward coverage, and they could definitely contest, uh, contest Dragon much easier than Rage could. So, Nicanter actually just messaged me in game. I think he whispered me. He says his key isn't working and he can't place wards. Oh no! I bet he can click on it though. I hope I, I, he can click on it and place it. However, it looks like they are going to go for a little bit of a bear. They do have the pink ward up there, dragon, and uh, not baron. Now it looks like oh, Nicanter Shivana might be in a bad situation here. He is in between four different players from just the usual, taking some big damage down there from Corky. He is exhausted as well. There comes the new new ulti, the ulti onto it. Big damage onto Shivana. Shivana is going to fall to Cassiopeia. Lee Sin now in pursuit of Kogma. There goes the flash. Uh, Corky with the big one hitting it in. Cassiopeia laying down her <laughs> ultimate, hitting some dot damage. However, Cassiopeia is going to fall to Katarina. Katarina falling, though, to Corky, so she is not able to shun Poe out of there, which, you know, as a Katarina player, that's what you hope to do. Go in, Stop use your shun have, However, we have Shen that's trying to kill Renekton. Renekton had tried to dive, but Shen has come out the better. And there goes the key strike, finishing him off. Wow. <laughs> Aggressive dive from now, her neck there. Now that trade is going to go towards Team Just Usual because they are going to pick up not only Dragon, it will be a two for two exchange, but they do pick up Dragon and they already up by two kills. Oh, and there goes the flash. Janna is going to fall. Janna kind of in a bad position there. That's what I was talking about with positioning. In a little bit of a bad position sitting there. They knew it. They took advantage of it and took her down fast after the Dragon. So that'll be a three for two exchange and Just the Usual getting a big start off in this early game. Yeah, I think we're seeing exactly what Just the Usual needs to be doing here, is utilizing that incredible teamwork that they have. They saw Janna and they and Corky knew exactly what he needed to do. He had the backing of everyone behind him, just in case. And it was just an incredibly well played. Those wards really doing work. You see that Just the Usual did have a ward in that tri brush and was absolutely ready in case one of them stuck around. Corky had, I believe, just enough mana for his Valkyrie there. Absolutely, it was just a great heads up play, and like you said, great team positioning, whereas uh, Nicanter playing, Shivana was in a little bit of bad position, he was wa kind of walking around the dragon area, they were able to lay the pink ward, however, he was stuck in between four different champions, he had Lee Sin, he had Cassiopeia, he had uh, Nunu, and also Corky there, and there was just no way that he was going to get out of there alive, now, we do see an attempt at blue buff trying to be taken here, Renekton coming down there, it's just Shen, uh, we have Shen, Katarina, and Shivana, and we also have Cassiopeia, Lee Sin, and Renekton, and it looks like it's possible going to go towards Team Rage. I don't know. They might try to... Uh, yeah, it looks like there's going to be a little bit of aggression on it. Cassiopeia laying down her poison. Oh, there goes the taunt in from Shen. Shen laying some big time damage down on the Lee Sin. However, the Cassiopeia ult is laid down. There goes Shyvana. She is going to fall. Lee Sin is also going to be able to resonating strike on the Shen. Shen is slowed. He is also poisoned. He, they can see where he is going. They, they know where he's going. Lee Sin lays down another key. He's got a resonating strike in. And oh, there goes the taunt in the Baron. However, he is going to run right into the face of the Renekton. And Renekton's going to see. You see this big blade I have in my hands? Taste it. <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to be another big exchange in favor of just the usual. And Team Rage is actually kind of getting beat at their own game. They're losing early game, which we were kind of expecting to go towards Team Rage. Yeah, Cassiopeia did a very good job early on there, chasing out Katarina, doing just way too much to her health bar, so she couldn't jump in and use the ultimate the way she wanted to. If, if you had noticed, I, I thought that Rage was going to be taking that blue buff because both Nunu and Corky were bot lane just farming while only Kog'Ma was down there. So I would have thought that because that that made it a 4v3 in the favor of Rage, but because Cassiopeia was able to chase Katarina out, oh no, it looks like Katarina has jumped on the Cassiopeia, doing amazing amounts of damage with the ultimate, the Ignite's going, though the Shrimpo is going to finish her off, even though Cassiopeia doing all that she can. Uh oh, Kat Katarina's in kind of a bad position here. So we've got three players from just usual on their way in. However, Shyvana's going to make her way in, and Katarina is going to be able to get out of there, so that'll be a kill. Oh,
Was Corky in with the Valkyrie. Look at the damage going on to Shyvana. Shyvana is not able to trade blows, not even able to compete in that exchange, and she is going to head out of there. That damage under Shyvana is extremely squishy right now and not able to trade with anyone. And Shyvana and Shen are kind of your main tanks in really early to mid game. Shyvana is going to be your main tank because Shen's going to be up top. He's going to be farming, kind of pushing that top lane. So uh, Shyvana really losing right now. She's 0 and 3, and she's got about a, if we look down at the gold advantage she's down by about a thousand gold over the enemy jungler now that's a really huge difference that would be the difference between a an item that could give her a lot of health and actually make uh, more use of that armor and magic resist that her ultimate gives her now we do see Lee Sin starting to make his way up top. There is not a ward, so right now Decade does not know that he's in there. There goes Renekton. Renekton is going to get taunted. He's going to decide to slice and dice his way back out of it. And uh, he, he's going to, they're going to decide not to really trade blows on that one and make their way out. Shen is an incredibly hard champion to gank just because of the fact oh, that he has a Oh, hold on dash. a second. We have, uh, no, I guess not. Nunu had exhausted Kog'Maw. That would have been a great time to just go and kill him because right now, Corky is in his prime. He has his Sheen, he has two Dorn's Blades, but in the meantime, we have Katarina coming down trying to do damage. Nope, she, uh, Corky's just going to be able to shoot a rocket in her face and say, nope, you get a rocket instead of me. <laughs> Katarina really kind of looking to pick up that, that Corky kill. One thing you want to do with Katarina, if you see anybody at about half health, go in there, unload all of your skills because you have that passive. Katarina's passive gives her a, a 15 second cooldown reduction on all of her cooldowns. So she's able to go in, kill, and also get out. We do see the first tower of the game going down in favor of just the usual. Renekton taking top tower over Shen, which is kind of surprising because that lane's been more or less inactive throughout a lot of this game. Oh my, oh no, the stun isn't going, yeah, the stun does stop Shen. Shen is able to shield someone across the map, but Renekton stops him with the stun. I want to make our way back door into a bottom lane where Nunu right now is laying down his ultimate. Nunu laying some big time damage down. It's 3v2 right now, and Cassiopeia comes in there. Janna is labeled lay down the tornado. Ka Janna is going to be able to flash out of there. However, Kog'Ma is going to die, and uh, Cassiopeia is going to pick up another kill. Valkyrie in is Corky. I don't know if Corky's going to try to take this one or not. Katarina is right around the corner. There goes the shield, and I think she is going to get out of there just fine. Janna is another champion. Very hard to gank, very hard to kill, uh, but uh, another no, trade. Like so going for it. Wow, I am amazed that they're going in there. There goes the Janna ultimate. However, Lee Sin still has his resonating strike on her, but he is going to back out, taking too much turret damage. Now we do see Katarina coming in. Renekton is sitting right down in this bush. I don't think that they know that he's there. No, they don't know that he's there. There's no ward. Uh, and, and also, Pawn Gypsy has no idea that Slacko is sitting in that bush. Yeah, right now, Katarina is just not getting the sort of feed that she needs. She is up 9 CS on Cassiopeia, but Cassiopeia has 3 kills and 3 assists while Katarina only has two kills. That gives Cassiopeia, let's see, Cassiopeia has 5,000 gold right now, Katarina has 4.3 thousand. That means, and Cassiopeia has been doing some major work in teamfights, throwing down ultimates exactly where they need to be, doing damage on the priority targets. I am very impressed with loopiness right now. Absolutely. Also, I mean, Corky right now is doing a lot of damage. If we take a look at his rockets, dealing well over 120 damage per hit, plus his sheen proc, plus his uh, shrapnel with his, his uh, Hextech shrapnel shells with his passive. Corky's doing a lot of damage right now, and he's 2-0-2 because of it. Somebody said in the chat here, the rockets, and yes, the rockets! Oh my goodness, the rockets! <laughs> Corky is uh, doing a, a really good amount of damage, and uh, really right now, outside of the top lane, which Renekton has gotten a few kills, he's 2-1-1, one, one. it's been really going in the favor of Team Just the Usual. Yeah, Just the Usual, like we were saying, having those really strong team fights, knowing exactly when to go in, when to move out. The only time I really saw a mistake was when Nunu had exhausted Kog'Ma, and Corky just didn't really do anything. I guess Valkyrie was down, he was running away, decided it wasn't worth it, especially with Janna there, probably wouldn't have been able to pick up the kill, or at least he didn't think he'd be able to do it. The catcher right now, um, on Shyvana, of course, he is still level 8, while Lee Sin, uh, being played by Chris, is level 10. Now that is a very large level gap, considering the levels of all the other champions. We're hitting level 12 on some of the solo Oh, we see a big right fight now. going down bottom here. Janna gets her tornado off on Corky. Corky is taking a lot of damage from Kog'Maw right now. Kog'Maw does have his ultimate. He's able to land it. No, he hits uh, Nunu, and we do see Katarina starting to make her way in there. I'm surprised she's not going to go through the, uh, the the jungle here to possibly get in there. I think Nunu knows that she's there, and Nunu's saying, yeah, you're going to come by here, you're going to get a snowball in the face, and you're going to be slowed down, so uh, I don't think that's going to happen. So we don't see too much of an exchange. Sorry about that. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but uh, 
almost a big kill. Kog'Maw really needs that kill. Right now he has, he's 0-1-1. Uh, he is a little bit behind on CS, not too far, but that one kill is really helping, those two kills are really helping out Corky. Yeah, we've been seeing the team fights happening earlier, which has really been in the favor of just the usual. I really think that Rage should have taken the advantage of their early game composition more than they did because they've basically been providing just the usual with the team fights that they've been needing. And they've definitely, become, definitely been coming out on top because of it. Cassiopeia, of course, with her AoE damage and her poison, she now has her Rylai's Crystal Scepter. Going for that uh, tougher Cassiopeia that we were seeing earlier in the tournament. Looks like Lee Sin is queued onto flares right now, and he's taking tons of damage from Renekton. In the meantime, Cassiopeia is coming in, doesn't have to use her ult yet. Shivana tries to ult away, but it looks like Torque is gonna be able to do enough damage. General has come up, tries to save her, but the rocket picks up the kill. In the meantime, Nunu is channeling her, his ult and dealing massive amounts of damage to Shen. Looks like Shen is going to go down to Pond Gypsy, and now, uh, oh no, it looks like Chris is not going to give this up. Katarina throws out the defensive ultimate deal as much damage as she can, but she is going to go down to the Twin Fang from Cassiopeia, and Renekton takes out Janna before he is taken down by the tower. What an amazing fight. Yeah, that was an amazing fight, especially in the favor of Just the Usual. You can tell they have come here, and they're coming into this game to win right off the bat. And uh, just great team play, really focusing well. You saw Renekton fall down, but you can you can kind of one of those in all chats go, worth it. <laughs> <laughs> because he, he took out Katarina. Katarina really has been getting the only kills right now for Team Rage, who are down 12 to 4 in kills. They're also down about 7k in gold, and they're also down, I believe, a dragon, if I remember right. Yeah, they did get the first dragon. We haven't seen a second dragon fight yet. So right now, just the usual is uh, really taking this over. And yes, this is a best out of three series, so make sure to stick here for the next game. Um, I, I, I have a feeling it's going in the favor of just the usual. We have seen crazier comebacks, though. <laughs> Yes, we have, uh, but but ge generally it's been in favor of just the usual because their team fighting is so strong. However, this is one of those games that I've definitely played before where you feel like the entire enemy team is just in gank squad mode for the entire time. And just the usual, they've been doing a really good job of balancing laning and then grouping up for these mm -hmm. kills. Right. And of course, look at these wards. Uh, right, now, right now, Rage has won in the bottom tri brush. In the mean, uh, for just the usual though, they have wards all over the place, and it looks like we're we might see an early Baron get here. We do Lucent see some taking out the only ward that Rage had there. We do see some fights going up top. Shen is slowed. He also gets exhausted right now by Nunu. He's taking some pretty big damage from Corky. Corky with his auto attacks able to do a lot of damage. There's the slow from Nunu. Nunu also blood boils oh, Corky. No. And there comes the rest of the team. Shen is going to fall oh, fast. No. Also in there is Shyvana. Shyvana is going to be around there. She's going to have to try to use her ultimate to get out. I don't know if it's going to be enough. There's the flash from Lee Sin. Lee Sin is just doing a lot of damage on to Shyvana. Shyvana getting hit hard. Janna is going to fall as well. Another three for O Exchange in favor of just the usual. And they're going to ping it out and they're going to say, D we got to get Baron right now. And we already actually see a surrender vote going out, but it <laughs> fails for Team Rage. So uh, if, if they get the Baron here, that's going to be very hard pressed right now for Rage to come back from this one. This is going to give them a very big, uh, not only gold advantage, experience advantage, but also that coveted Baron buff that is uh, it's just so powerful. Now we see Katarina kind of taking out mid tower. <laughs> Doing her best to make it somewhat worth it, uh, although I'm not too sure. Like you said, there's ward, co there's like no ward coverage right now for Team Rage. They 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 more or less have no idea what's going on with with the game. Yeah, I was really surprised with Rage's decision there. They just sort of ran into just the usual one at a time. I mean, they had to suspect that most of the team was there, collapsing onto Baron, making sure they didn't see it. Up oh, double ward for double vision there for just the usual. Um, <laughs> well, one for each eyeball, you know, kind of like how you buy double boots, you buy double ward so you can get one for each eye. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. It makes sense, yeah. You can tell that they're <laughs> well, also there getting ready for a dragon. They probably have the timer down on it, and Cassiopeia's actually already laying down poison, hoping to get something. Yeah, I think right now they just want to wait. I don't think they have the dragon timer, but they know it was taken down. Yep, there it is. It was taken around around that taken down around that time, and there's going to be absolutely no contest here. Shen has gone top lane to try and farm. Katarina looks like she wants to go up and take raves, but I mean that's not going to be too much. Uh, that's not going to help her too much. Now she just wants to go farm. Right now, Rage is so very behind, and I don't really see any conceivable way for them to come back from this. 
they just do not have the composition to fight this sort of lead that Just the Usual has come out ahead with. Yeah, absolutely. They just haven't, we... I don't think they've been playing as smart as they needed to. Because no. like I was saying, Just the Usual has a uh, stronger teamfight composition, and they were starting to teamfight so very early on. They should have just said, no, you want to teamfight? We'll just scoot away, we'll take what we can get, and we'll get ahead by, by taking these little skirmishes instead of these big 3v3, 4v4, 4v3 team fights that have been happening this whole game. Yeah, we see on that back, by the way, after Dragon, Cassiopeia picking up after her Rylai, she picks up a needlessly large rod and another Doran's ring, giving her a lot of AP. Of course, that Dor that that needlessly large rod giving her an extra 80 ability power, that's going to be really big in team fights that they are already winning. And uh, I, I don't know if they have too much of a way to answer that. There's not too much magic resistance being built right now on Team Rage, so Cassiopeia is going to be able to go in there with her AoE and deal a lot of damage. Her ultimate, her poisons, also her twin fangs, she's going to do a lot of damage. Yeah, she's already getting, like, she has her needlessly large rod, which is the biggest component of Death Cap. Oh, it looks like just the usual wanted to try and, uh, want to try and do a big bush bait here. Oh, Jana finally picking up oracles. That is a very late oracles for Rage. They needed that much earlier. You saw the wards all over the river, and that's what really, I think, allowed just the usual to come out so far ahead. And the oracles just wasn't there. Right, it was really that early map control dominance that allowed them to get dragons, it allowed them to get also barons, and it allowed them to get a lot of kills that maybe necessarily wouldn't have happened had there been a little bit more control on the vision of the map. So we see them pushing down mid, and there's just not a lot Rage can do right now because of how much damage Corky's doing. Blood Boil with Nunu. Renekton is really beefy right now and able to do good chunks as well. So, I, I mean, really, I don't see how they can win a straight-up 5v5 team fight. They're going to have to wait until they can pick somebody off in the jungle or at least, um, at least find a way to get somebody maybe in Shen's taunt and, and kind of pick pick out one person. Now we do see, there goes in the damage. We see attack on the mid tower. This might be the final fight here as Nunu lays down his ultimate. We see Kog'Ma trying to lay down some damage. Shivana is taking the most damage out of anyone. There goes the Janna ultimate. She's going to have to get out of there. We do see the exhaust on the Kog'Ma. Now they're going to be able to pick up this turret, possibly this uh, th this inhibitor as well. Kog'Ma sitting back there trying to do some damage, but Kog'Ma really just not able to do a ton of damage. And, you know, they're going to, just the usual is going to head out of there after after doing what they came for. They took out the inhibitor, they took out the tower, and uh, we see another surrender vote for Team Rage. We see Just the Usual really kind of pulling away even further with this one. Yeah, not to say I told you so, but I think that <laughs> team fight went exactly as we were expecting it. We have, of course, hit mid-game, and Just the Usual is much farther ahead than I could have even anticipated. And we were seeing, we were seeing the power of that poke composition that Just the Usual has. Even though they have such a strong initiation, they also have strong poke. And we saw that coming out from Corky, who is quite fed right now, 5-0 and 5. We are seeing that from Cassiopeia. Of course, they are in general... No, it looks like Kog'Maw does have more CS, but Corky with 5 kills, not much of an answer to that. Uh, Katarina is, has just a little bit more CS than Cassiopeia, but Cassiopeia has 4 kills and 7 assists. And we're seeing that gold being translated into poke damage. They poked them while they were under tower, and then as soon as they thought they could win, especially with Baron buff, they engaged onto them. Janna was, as we saw, forced to use her ultimate uh, just to keep everyone alive and just give up the inhibitor. So not to say I told you so, but... <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and it looks like right now, just the usual doing exactly what you want to do in this situation. You know, don't do anything crazy. Go ahead, push out all the lanes, take as much farm as possible, push out the towers, and really dominate the map control. Go ahead. They're, they're not going to be able... Right now, there's nothing Rage can do to go out there. The entire map from this section on, if you look right here, this entire map right now is all just the usuals because there's nothing that Rage can do. They have to sit back. They have to defend, or they're going to be able to push in. Right now, as we see, they're also able to push even though they are there. And uh, we might see another tower go down, another team fight. There goes the tornado yeah, in from... Sorry, there goes the tornado in from Janna. We see Corky sitting back and poking out the turret. Kog'Maw is still sitting back, laying down his ultimate, able to do some poke damage, but it's just not enough. Shen looking to go in there. There, he lays Taunt down on three people. Shen, though, gets heavily focused. The Renekton ultimate into the Nunu ultimate. Nunu is going to get disrupted and out of there. Falling fast is Nunu to Katarina. Katarina, though, is going to die to Lee Sin. Big time damage going off onto Corky. Shyvana picks up a kill. Oh, it looks like Renekton's going to fall as well, and Rage 
picking up a big team fight here, coming out in huge fashion. Shen is just tanking like a boss right now and healing as well as he is taking, he's just taking the hits after hit after hit. We see Lee Sin have to bail out of there using his safeguard. Cassiopeia now is on the hunt. She is running out of there trying to do her best to kite away the rest of Team Rage, but what a big response from Team Rage. However, two did fall, so it was a three for two trade uh, in the favor of Team Rage. I don't know if it's enough. It might be a little too late for Team Rage to kind of make it back on this one. They do have a turret down. Did they grab the turret? No, they did not grab the turret. Uh, so they have one turret, one inhibitor down, but man, oh man, what a great response from Team Rage. Yeah, they saw that Raging Kenny was way too far ahead. He was trying to land down damage on the turret, and when Shen got the taunt off, Corky was just stuck in the middle of that fight and taken down incredibly quickly. In the meantime, we saw Cog Ma, who was exactly where he wanted to be. Way out of the team fight, he had his bio arcane barrage going, so he was even farther away. He was in the perfect position to just deal all of the pain that he needed to. And looks like things are going down on Baron. Even though Rage came out on top of that team fight, you still have min uh, super minions pushing down mid. You still have a 10k advantage wow, in the favor that... of just the usual. And yeah, looks like that's going to be Baron. No. They see that Rage is coming because of their excellent ward control, and they're going to go ahead and back off. Even so, I don't think that Rage would be able to take Baron. If they did try to take it, I think it would be a mistake, because we do have Cassiopeia, who has blue buff right now. No, it looks like she's going to back. Rage doesn't know it, though, because they don't have the wards, and they're just going to back off, chasing just the usual off of Baron for now. Now, something to note is that Rage is doing a good job. You, you, right now, you do see that um, a lot of ward coverage for just the usual down in the jungle down here where the red is for Team Rage. I'm a little bit surprised that they have them all down there because you, you want a ward up here and have the wards near the Baron. We do see Rage starting to push out that top lane. We saw Kog'Maw up there taking out some creep waves, trying his best to kind of keep at least one wave pushed and doing their best to keep the lanes by the Baron nice and pushed, have nice little bit of vision on them. So they do have a little bit of map control here for this Baron fight. I don't know if it's going to be enough. We do see that Lee Sin is in there. Oh, and they turn their direction. There goes the, uh, excuse me, the resonating strike from Lee Sin onto Shen. Lee Sin is just going in there. I don't know if this is a good idea for Lee Sin. We see Cassiopeia right now taunted by Shen. There goes the ultimate from Shyvana. Some pretty big damage onto Cassiopeia. She is able to ulti out of there. We see now some, we do see a big split right now from Team Just the Usual. So we see Katarina getting caught out of place. She is stunned by Renekton. Renekton with big time damage inhibitor uh, has respawned for the other team. And there goes Nunu to Kog'Maw. However, Corky is able to take out Shyvana. Shen with the ultimate on. To, uh, I didn't even see who he ulted there. Katarina. It looked like he ulted Katarina to keep Katarina alive because we have a Renekton who is very high health. He is very angry and he wants to do some damage right now. And we see all of the pings going off on that top lane. I don't know. I I'm a little bit surprised. I'll be a little bit surprised to see if they try to take it. It was a one for one exchange. However, right now, Team Rage is hurting. They have, uh, they don't have as much health as, uh, just the usual do. So they're going to push that top lane and hopefully try to get it. Well, Chris was being hyper-aggressive there. He decided to engage on Shen, but it looks like he's going to dive into the team. He wants to take down Lee Sim, but he's just too far away from his team. However, Kog'Ma, nope, Kog'Ma's not going to be able to deal the damage to finish him off. Shen just wanted to dive in there and try to take down someone. But the damage from Corky, from Cassiopeia, from Renekton, and Lee Sin was just too much. Absolutely, and, and something, you know, right now, Team Finally, just Baron's going to be taken. Yeah, just the usual right now is really tanky. Right now, a lot of the team, even Cassiopeia, you have the Rayleighs, you have the Dorian for the extra health. You do have Renekton, who right now has his, uh, uh, Renekton right now has his chain oh, no. vest. Oh, it looks like, yeah, a, a little bit of a team fight going down here. We see the tornado going down from Janna, but there's not going to be too much going off on it. But we do see a really tanky team, and we see a really important item on Lee Sin that sometimes we don't see a lot of. I, I, we see a lot in competitive play. I wish we saw more people picking it up in solo queue because of how powerful it is. But it's that Aegis the Legion. It provides an aura of armor, magic resistance, and attack damage for your team, and that cannot be underestimated. No, definitely not. It gave him the power to engage onto Shen and still survive when he was inundated by four people. I think that just the usual sort of threw away a possible earlier win there when they when Lee Sin had engaged onto Shen because Shen was way out ahead and again we saw Kog'Maw exactly where he wanted to be. Even though just the usual had the 10k gold advantage, they came out one for one because they initiated onto the wrong person. Shen is incredibly tanky right now. We see him picking up Aegis. Oh, looks like Shivana 
and Shen have both picked up an Aegis for their team. Wow. Possibly a bit of miscommunication there, but Shen does have his War Mogs, and all of this together is going to make him very tanky and is going to make his Key Strike do a lot of damage. Oh my gosh, that bottom inhibitor tower is literally 8 HP right now. It's at 8 HP right now, and we do see just the usual starting to line up. They want to go and take it. I mean, all they really have to do is go in there. I know Renekton's going to want to slice and dice. Oh, excuse me, Ruthless put it his way in there and just take it. I know he does have the tanking ability, and if they go and take this, we will probably see a team fight. We do see Katarina throwing down some twin blades onto everybody. A little bit of poke war going on back and forth. Kog'Maw lays down his uh, slowing puke vomit ball. <laughs> 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 and uh, we, we see a little bit. I'm surprised they haven't gone in there and tried to take that turret quite yet. That Shen is sitting there camping it perfectly. He does have his taunt. So, I mean, that's probably a great call on uh, Just the Usual's side. They're instead going to ping it off and they're going to go and rush the middle. It uh, looks like they're going to come around the other end. Oh, Shyvana getting caught. She is going to have to uh, flash her way out of there. However, she will not be able to be a part of any team fight that goes on right now. So, this might be a great situation for Just the Usual, who's going in and taking some damage onto the turrets for the Nexus. There goes Cassiopeia taking down the bottom lane we're probably going to see a team fight happen right around here by the inhibitor yeah possibly i think that yeah shen is way far ahead and he's jumped on the corgi corgi is backing out trying to do all he can new new ultimate stopped in midair and now shibana is jumping on to cassiopeia cassiopeia is very low looks like he's going to be taken down but it's just not enough shen is still in the middle of the team and kogma is way back with red buff gonna be able to stop anyone no one from just the usual was taken down there even though both cassiopeia and Corky were jumped on incredibly well. I think this is going to be GG. Yep, GG coming out from Slacko. But Kog'Maw will not have it. Oh, Shen is there <laughs> to try and take down Corky. Corky goes down. I still don't think it's going to be enough, though. Unless... No, Kazubia, yep, goes down to Kog'Maw. In the meantime, Shen has ulted Kog'Maw to try and save him. Nunu is caught all alone. And Rage is going to drag this game out just a little bit longer. <laughs> What a smart play, and Flair is playing Kog'Maw right now, has taken, uh, Flair's playing Kog'Maw, has scored a triple kill. I mean, I, I've, I've seen crazier comebacks, and right now Kog'Maw, he's got his Black Cleaver, he's got a Phantom Dancer, he's doing a lot of damage. And Kog'Maw, one of the things that Kog'Maw does so nicely is he is able to shred armor, he is able to shred tanky champions, so <laughs> don't, don't, don't take Rage out of this game quite yet. They haven't taken themselves out. I think Shacko, or uh, Slacko, I said Shacko, but Slacko <laughs> doing a little bit of a uh, GG bait there. Just saying, oh yeah, GG, go ahead, take it, whatever. And then <laughs> going in and, and messing them up. And we're going to see Rage get to work here. They're going to start pushing out the lanes and maybe try to work their way up. They do have all, if you look at here, they only have one inhibitor or one turret from each lane down. So they have a lot of work cut out ahead of them if they do want to take this one. Oh, we do see an inhibitor is going to be responding soon. I am incredibly impressed with Kog'Maw. He has been exactly where he needs to be. And like you were saying, Kog'Maw not played a lot in solo queue play because he doesn't really have an escape. But in competitive play, when you can hold that line, when you do have that communication, when you can keep him safe and at a good distance, he is able to lay down as much damage as he needs to. And we've been seeing in these team fights, no one can touch him. We saw earlier in lane, of course, you, you're able to jump onto him because he has to step out to go and farm. But in these team fights, he's just way in the back. Now, it looks like just the usual stepping up, wants to just take this inhibitor right back down, going to keep Rage back to their base. Rage has absolutely no turrets now, and it looks like just the usual wants to finish this off. Yeah, we might see one final team fight here right around the Nexus, and we'll see which way it goes. There goes some damage onto Nunu. Nunu is going to lay down his ultimate. There goes the flash from Kog'Maw trying to get his way out of there. Corky is in there with his Gatling gun, but Corky's taking a lot of damage. There goes Kog'Maw. Corky is going to fall as well to Shen. We see Katarina with her ultimate. It is not able to do enough, but Nunu is going to fall, and it looks like coming from behind was Cassiopeia taking out the Nexus the whole time. Game number <laughs> one is going to go in the favor of just the usual. We do have game number two, though, coming up right after this. So keep it here because it is the finals. It is a best out of three. And uh, both of these.